Porsche just unveiled their first electric vehicle, the Porsche Taycan. Taycan. That's how you say it. Taycan. And it's Porsche. So I thought it made sense to just dive in and see what the specs are and how they stack up against the kind of only competitor in the space, the Tesla Model S. Let's go. Now, before we get too far along into the specs and the comparison, let me just say, of course, I have a bias here. The name of the channel is Teslanomics. I have owned all three Teslas, but being as the, the core belief I have is that we should look at the data and use that to inform our opinions, that's what we're gonna do here. So keep that in mind and let's see how they stack up. There are some key categories I like to look at when I compare vehicles. I don't look at every single spec under the sun because I try to focus on the ones that I think really matter. And the first one of those is price. Now I'm looking at the Porsche Taycan Turbo S, the highest end one, because that's really where they're targeting is the high end version here. The, even the lower end, the Turbo is, is still an extremely expensive vehicle. So I'm looking at the Turbo S versus the Tesla Model S performance. The Porsche Taycan Turbo S comes in at $185,000, just shy of 200 grand. And comparing that to the Tesla Model S performance, you're looking at just under $100,000. And if you add autopilot, which you should do, you would be just under 106,000, 105, 990,000 dollars to be exact. So both obviously very expensive vehicles. The market here is the high-end luxury buyer, not the everyday person already being in this category here. However, there is still a disparity here. I mean, 100 grand versus almost 200 grand, that's a big difference between between these two vehicles. The next category I like to look at with electric cars specifically is range. So when it comes to range, we have to look at this from the European WLTP standard, not the EPA standard that we're used to looking at Tesla's with. So these numbers are gonna be a little bit different and are maybe even a bit more removed from reality based on my own experience. But the Porsche Taycan Turbo S comes in at 258 miles of range or 412 kilometers, whereas the Tesla Model S performance, again, using that European standard, comes in at 367 miles of range, which is 590 kilometers a big difference between these two vehicles. But I don't think that matters a ton because of who this car is really for. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Now, zero to 60 is a common thing that we look at for performance here. And of course, electric cars dominate this. In fact, the world leader in this is the Porsche 918 Spyder, which does have two electric motors in it, but you know, costs north of $3 million. So these cars come in uh, very close to that for you know dramatically cheaper price. The Porsche Taycan Turbo S comes in with a zero to 60 miles per hour in 2.6 seconds, whereas the Tesla Model S performance comes in at 2.4. So that two tenths of a second difference is, is kind of an issue actually for this car because Clearly they're targeting the Porsche lover, the, the racetrack driver, the person that just loves performance and their vehicles. And the fact that they can't get it a better than the Tesla Model S performance, I think is, is kind of gonna hurt them a little bit here because you're gonna go down to the track and guess what? The Tesla owner's still gonna have the edge on the Porsche, even though the Porsche owner paid almost double the price. The next category I like to look at in, this isn't really a spec, but it is a very important one, I think, when people consider buying a vehicle, and that's styling. So the Mission E concept prior to the now production version that was just unveiled this morning, were very similar in design. However, they both are gorgeous. And I really think that they maybe have the edge over Tesla right now because the Tesla Model S, maybe it's just me being a veteran kind of used to it, is just getting a bit long in the tooth. So I've seen some mock-ups and some different things for the Tesla Model S, but right now from an exterior standpoint, I would give the Taycan maybe a half a point edge. And the last category I really like to think of for electric vehicles here is charging. So the Porsche Taycan offers some good options here as well. It actually has two different charging ports, which is kind of interesting, and it can charge reportedly up to 270 kilowatts. That's the speed at which it can accept a charge. This would give you 80% state of charge, meaning if your battery was around 5% and you went all the way up to 80 in around 22.5 minutes, according to their press release. And of course, on the Tesla side, you have the supercharger network, so I would definitely give them the edge on that currently. But one thing that's interesting is the Model S does not support anything above 150 kilowatts 
kilowatts of charging currently. That means that if you were to go from say 5% to 80%, you're gonna be around 30 to 40 minutes versus the 22 minutes that the Porsche Taycan is gonna give you. Now, the Porsche Taycan is currently not you know, physically in someone's driveway and they're not doing this on a daily basis. So I think there's still some variables here and we're gonna take some time to see what those real world charge times are like once people have them. So right now, I would say it's a bit of a wash because Tesla clearly has the advantage on having more plentiful and, and options for the supercharger network, but only being able to charge you 150 kilowatts versus 270 is a big disparity and is gonna change your user experience pretty dramatically between these two vehicles. So the next big question is when can you get one? When can you actually get your hands on one of these vehicles, assuming you have 200 grand to spare and you really want one. Well, according to what I found online, they already have around 20,000 orders and they're going to aim around 40,000 of these being produced per year. So in terms of the you know Porsche and Volkswagen group, a, a, a very small number, even compared to Tesla's numbers, it's really small. So it's a much more niche product, which makes sense at almost 200 grand. But the LA Times is saying that they're gonna start deliveries in California in December of 2019. I haven't seen anyone else report that, so you know, to be determined, but it's gonna be soon. It's not something that's gonna happen five years from now, right? You were gonna look at them at the end of this year, which is only a few months away, crazy as, as it may sound, um, or early next year, probably summer of next year is when when I'm guessing you're gonna see you know more and more of these popping up, maybe at some of these EV race events and those kind of things. And it's gonna be really exciting, I think, to have some more competition out there because that's really what's exciting about this is that finally, uh, a major automaker is doing something that is competitive, that is putting out their full effort because this hopefully will inspire Tesla to update the Model S, which as I've said, in my opinion, is a bit long in the tooth. Specifically, the Tesla Model S needs maybe an exterior refresh, plus maybe the V3 charging would be fantastic. I mean, I can't imagine them not doing that, but that would also mean that they need the new battery tech inside of the Model S, and of course you do for the Model X. So that would be a pretty big refresh, probably pushing the Model S above 400 miles of range, supporting that 250 kilowatt charging. I mean, we're talking a big update. So that is very likely to come, you know, around the truck unveil, maybe this year, but definitely by the time that the Taycans are hitting the, the roads, you're, we're probably gonna see something with the Model S. I, I can't imagine Tesla's not gonna respond to this in the way that they do, which is usually by just really raising the bar. And this is the kind of thing that I think Tesla and Elon have also been really vying for this whole time. The whole idea was to get the industry excited about this and Porsche making this car a reality is a clear sign that it is working. Now, my final thoughts on this are that the Porsche Taycan is not for everyone. $185,000 is extremely expensive, but it's gonna be a very good vehicle. It's gonna be an awesome track car. You know it is just because it's a Porsche and that's how they do things. It is probably gonna beat the Model S on the track. I mean, currently, absolutely. And probably the Model 3 as well. I mean, this thing is really gonna set the bar for the people that are those weekend track drivers that really love to take the cars out and, and, see, and push them to the limits and see what they can do. And I can't stop thinking that somehow Porsche is basically taking a play out of Tesla's playbook here with the 2008 Roadster. Because really, if you think about what the 2008 Roadster was, it was a perception shattering product. It wasn't really meant to sell millions or take over a market segment or any of that. All it was meant to do was to show people that electric cars can perform and be competitive against gas cars. And it opened everyone's eyes and gave Tesla this, this kind of like, like magical buzz around them and, and, and everyone gravitated towards it and wanted it. It was insane if you guys remember when those first came out. And then fast forward to the 2013 Tesla Model S, which Motor Trend recently dubbed the best car of the year in the past 70 years. Literally the most influential car in our lifetimes came after the first car that Tesla really hit the market with. And the whole point of that car was to make a splash and to get the attention. And then they followed it up with literally a car that has changed everything. So maybe Porsche is just kind of copying that strategy here, coming out with an ultra luxury, ultra high end, ultra everything vehicle for a very limited number of people. But they now legitimately 
are the only ones out there competing with Tesla. Remember, prior to this, there are no electric vehicles that even compete with a 2012 Tesla Model S. That's it. So this is the first time another automaker has put an actual vehicle into production that stands a chance of competing. And that is a beautiful thing because with competition, it just gets better and better for us consumers. So I'm curious what you guys think. Share this video with someone that is still an EV hater and doesn't really realize the transformation that we're about to see on a broad scale across the entire auto industry because I think they need to hear this. And once they see this car and what it can do, I think everyone's eyes are gonna be quite open. And for that, I really applaud Porsche's efforts here and, and hope to get a test drive in one of these one day. So. That's it for this one. Obviously, as more info comes out, we'll take a look deeper because that's what we do here. And so thanks for watching. And don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you guys back in the next one. Hey, thanks for watching the video. I hope you got something out of it. Now, if you want to dive deeper and join the Teslanomics community, chat with me on a daily basis in a private Discord group, consider joining us at patreon.com slash So thanks for watching again, and I hope to see you in there soon.